Jubilee. 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 Huckin will explain to you what Jubilee means. As this video is called the Bible Jubilee. And the Jubilee was after 49 years of slavery, on the 50th year, they would set the slaves free and return their possessions to them. And so what it's telling you is they had slaves. So the Bible was actually advocated slavery. The Bible is a slave book. Yes. Philemon! 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 He's emphasizing these to you so you'll get the, the principle, the point of view in this. Philemon was a, a Christian slave owner. And the Apostle Paul sent Onesimus, who had become a Christian. He had been a slave to Philemon. And the Apostle Paul sent Onesimus back to Philemon, his Christian slave owner. Philemon is a book in the New Testament. You never hear a preacher preach it. Jubilee is when they set the slaves free. You'll never hear a preacher preach it. Because the Bible advocates slavery. They'll preach it, but not in truth. When you go to church and you take your Bible, and the Bible says that you can sell your daughters. They sold Joseph for 20 pieces of silver to Ishmaelites. That was Abraham's other son, Ishmael. And when, when they can have all these slaves, then you go to church and you come out and tear down some general on a horse 150 years ago. There's something wrong with your mind. You're not attacking the right uh, slave owner, the right slave master. You're attacking people that use the icon, the Bible, the slave book, to put you in slavery. You tear down some statue, but you won't tear up your Bible. Yeah, your Bible, you'll go there for 40 years. They'll take 10% of your money. They'll take your obedience, teach you false doctrine, and you'll be in that for years and years and years, and you'll never know it's the biggest idol on earth. It's what makes you a slave. See, that's what makes you a slave. You go to church, you say the Bible's the Word of God, and it's a slave book. Fill it on! Jubilee! You don't even know what's in the Bible. They'd sell their daughters. Jacob worked seven years for Leah. He worked seven years for Rachel. Because it's a slave book. That's right. And you won't tear it up because you know Satan will get you. Now, you know the Bible is okay as history. You can't do away with history. And we would have had the history anyway if it hadn't been compiled into an idol. And then they called it the Word of God to take authority over God's people. But I want to tell you about the real Jubilee. Jesus came to set the captives free. And this Jubilee, he sent us to tell you that the Bible is an idol. The Bible is the mark of the beast. Under the new covenant, the Bible has no authority over us. The old covenant was by the written law and by the Ten Commandments until the seed, the Spirit would come. Jesus Christ is the Holy Seed. And he fills us with his Holy Spirit, which is the new covenant. It's Christ in us. We don't have an outward law anymore. He writes his laws in our hearts. We have his nature by his Spirit in us. If you have to have an outward law written with ink and on tablets of stone, then you're still a slave. You're still a captive. So this Jubilee, children, those of you that have ears to hear and a heart to understand, this Jubilee, children, is the real Jubilee. You're set free from slave slavery to the Bible and to the devil and to people with Bibles. Why do you have to work and slave for other people and make them rich? We don't we're not slaves in the kingdom of God. That's Satan's system. And he used the Bible to enslave you children. You need to get 
out of slavery from under the Bible. The Bible is a slave book. You need to come to the living Jesus Christ. He will walk with you. He will talk with you. He will speak to you. He will listen to you. You can walk with your Father, our Creator, and you can walk with your Savior, Jesus, who loves you. He's our husband. We're his bride. Some of you children know this is true. You've experienced it. But the ones of you that don't, you're still under slavery. You're still advocating slavery. Whether you say you do or you say you don't, if you believe the Bible is the Word of God, then you are advocating slavery because the Bible advocates slavery. For the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, then they are a law unto themselves. So 600,000 young men lay dead because of a book. They was interpreting a book instead of living in the Spirit and getting words from Jesus Christ. Do you know that the president, Washington, the father of this country, America, do you know he's swearing on the Bible? Do you know he owned slaves? Because it was permissible. It was permissible by the Bible. The South actually won the war with the Scriptures. Because the scriptures, if a, if a man was a slave, he wanted to stay with his owner, they'd put a hole in his ear. And he'd be that man's slave forever. But they all had possession when they went into Israel. Now Philemon was a Christian slave owner. Paul sent Onesimus back. That's why they don't preach the book of Philemon. That's not why they don't say, uh, say Jubilee. See, the southern churches were right according to the Bible. Jacob served Laman for seven years to get, or 14 years to get Rachel. Joseph's brothers sold him to the Ishmaelites. And you know, Ishmael was Jacob's, was uh, Abraham's son. So he was kin to Joseph. They sold him for 20 pieces of silver. He, they took him into Egypt and sold him to the Egyptians. They'd sell people like there wasn't nothing. And Jubilee, after 49 years, after they set you free. And they had it written in the old law. This, this is why you must understand the Bible is a slave book. If you buy a Hebrew servant, six years he shall serve you, and in the seventh he should go out for nothing. They buy servants. They're, they're slaves. They're, that's the way it is. And the master bring it to the judges. He shall also bring it to the door, or to the doorpost. And master shall bore his, head, his ear through with an awl, and he shall shove him forever. They had slaves all from, from day one in the Bible, all of them. If you believe the Bible is the word of God, you believe in slavery. See, this is what amazes me about how crazy people are out tearing down old statues of some general on a horse, 150 years ago, but they won't tear up their Bible. And the Bible is the very thing that got them into slavery. You go to the church for 40 years, you give them 10% of your money, you obey their doctrines, you go into all the world and preach the gospel, and you don't know that you've taken the mark of the beast. You don't know that you're worshiping an idol. That is really uh, crazy to a, to a dumb hillbilly that never knew anything. A man will sell his daughter. Now they could sell their daughters. A layman sold Rachel to be a manservant, but she shall not go out as a manservant because she gets pregnant. See, she don't have, she's different than the men servant. The southern states split with the northern states over slavery. Churches split over slavery. That's what causes the war. And this is what they're doing. They're interpreting the scriptures instead of talking to God. And both of them was wrong. Now, people in Africa, they sold their people to slave traders. Now, I want you to listen as this touches me. The Irish were slaves also. You must understand this. The Irish slave trade began when James the Sixth, which James the Sixth 
He printed 66 books. He is a sixth out of the house of, of, of Stuart. He is the one that give us the mark of the beast, you see. He's the beast. James the sixth. Do you know what he sold? 30,000 of my people. Now, ask my, my people from Scotland. But they call us Scot-Irish because it's just across the bay there. And the boats go back and forth from Scotland to Ireland. And he sold 30,000 of us, Irish prisoners, as slaves to the New World. His proclamation of 1625 required. Irish political prisoners were sent overseas and sold to English settlers. That's how the Irish got to America, you see. And so this is a slave book. If you can't see this, you're not part of God. You're not controlled by a book. You're controlled by Jesus Christ through the anointing. Now I want to tell you something about Truth. Basic, simple, plain, hillbilly truth. You little children that follow me, I don't speak with great words. I don't take your money. I don't want, I, I'd rather give you money as take your money. I don't want to be notarized in the flesh. I don't have that. I want you to know the plain and simple truth. I'm going to tell you about my life. I always tell you something about my life. I started out when I was a boy. My father strengthened my hands in the cornfields of the Appalachian Mountains. And he spoke to me many times. He's let me know him without knowing about him. I never went to church. They handled snakes back in the mountains. I didn't believe in that. I killed rattlesnakes. So one day after I'd come into Christ and I was studying, I didn't yet know that the Bible was an idol. He told me that in 1970. But from 64 to 69, he was teaching me, telling me to tell you this truth. And he told me the foundation teachings. He told me about the Holy Ghost in me. And then I want to tell you what happened to me. I was so in love with Jesus Christ. I love him more than anything. Jesus came to this world He's the greatest man that ever left a footprint on this earth. By his blood, he brought me back to my creator. He redeemed me. He's the atonement for my sins, the perpetuation. And he regenerated me, baptized me in the water, in the Holy Ghost. And he's the reason that I have truth in me. Now listen to me, I want to tell you the truth. People today... Look to scriptures. Don't do that. Don't look. In, in them you think you have eternal. You don't have life in them. The Gentiles which have not the law, do by nature to the things contained in the law, they are a law unto themselves. I was living out in the country, and I lived in Athens, Georgia. And in Athens, Georgia, that's where Paul preached was in Athens. And they had a place called Mars Hill. I lived down on Mars Hill. And I was praying under a tree for three years. One night, I, I worked construction work. I was always good with these little old hands. And I operated equipment and done things like that to make a living. And I, I got into bed early because I was tired. I had to get up early. And I was laying in my bed. Now listen, I wouldn't tell you a lie. Because if I tell you a lie, I'll go to hell. I don't want to be separated from God. I'm telling you, I always tell you little children the plain truth. I was laying in the bed at twilight time. I got into bed early. And in the, back in the 60s, we put the bed up in the corner, you know, and have, you could get on both sides of it. And I laid down over next to the window on the right-hand side of it. And I've been praying to Jesus. And do you know what? It was like a storm. Came to me. This is the first time he really appeared to me. He put the Holy Ghost in me before, but now he appeared to me. It was like a storm. I don't know much about electricity, but it's real. You know, it's invisible, but it's real. And there was electrons and protons and neutrons. I'd studied some about them, and they was in the air. 
And it was coming, it was a storm like coming all around me. And Jesus don't speak to you in the flesh. He speaks to you in the spirit. He put Paul in a trance, he put Peter in a trance, and he had me in a trance. And that storm that came through, all them electrons and protons and neutrons, and I come out in the middle of it. And many of you children won't remember the long distance telephone operators that we had back in them days. All we had was landlines. We didn't have satellites. And he come and stood by my bed. Now this is Jesus. This is the way you worship him. You don't worship him in a book. You worship him in truth and life. This is the temple of God. He walks in us and talks in us and lives in us. He poured out the Spirit on the day of Pentecost as Joel prophesied. And as Jeremiah prophesied, he writes his laws in our hearts. He come and stood by my bedside. Jesus, the Son of God, the one that was raised from the dead, came to a dumb hillbilly. Everybody else was having meetings with 10,000 people. I couldn't get nobody because I had the Holy Ghost. There are very few of us. He come and stood by my bedside. I never felt so good in all my life. I couldn't get sick. I couldn't even catch a cold. For six months after that, when Jesus touches you, he takes away all evil. He came to me, and it's right in the middle of the storm. I was a sailor for four years. I got two honorable discharges. I was with the 25th Infantry Division when they left Korea in 54. And I was on a minesweeper from 58 to 62. I got two honorable discharges. I sailed the seas. And I know what it means to be in the midst of a hurricane. A hurricane right in the middle of it, you're in the eye of it. There ain't much problem in there. It's when you get outside that eye, it's where the storm was raising. And I got right in the middle of that. And there was Jesus standing, standing by my bed. And I tell this so you look for the living God. You don't look in a book to find him. You look in the spirit to find him. You know what? You know what the word Christian means? It means anointed one. You're anointed by the Holy Ghost. They preach the gospel with the Holy Ghost. And Jesus come and stood by my bed. <laughs> he called my name. And he's in another dimension. Right above my head is Jesus. And he called my name. <laughs> and it sounded, oh, it sounded so beautiful. I'd search for him and search for him. And he called my name and he said, these are words. He said, I'm going to start delivering you like I did Israel. He spoke them words to me. It sounded like a long distance telephone operator. He was in another dimension. And he said, I'm going to start delivering you like I delivered Israel. That was in the 60s. Back in, I'm 83 years old. And do you know something? Guess what? I've never been in a hospital. <laughs> I've never been in, I've been in jail. They put me in jail, but I didn't stay long because he come and delivered me. I've been run out of Mexico. I've been run out of Peru. I've been run out of Brazil. I've been run out of Canada. I've been run out of California and South Carolina. They put me in jail. But they can't get rid of me. <laughs> because he kept his word. He always keeps his word. If you want a word, don't look for it in no book. That's a slave book. Anybody that says the Bible's the word of God advocates slavery. Don't go that route. Let your body be the temple of the living God. And let God live in you and walk in you and talk in you. And you be his sons and his daughters. That's what he done on the day of Pentecost. They were speaking as God gave them utterance. Jesus will come to you. He'll write your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. And He'll live in you by the Spirit. And He'll speak to you by the Spirit. 
I'm telling you little children the truth, and you know I always tell you the truth. I don't want your money. I don't want you to be controlled by me. I want you to have faith in Jesus Christ that you can hear his voice. And I hope someday, you that I'm speaking to, that you'll come to me in that new world where we have a new body and Jesus is our king and God is our father. And you come to me and you say, hey, yeah, Billy, I come out of your dispensation of time and I'll hug you and I'll say, that's all I ever wanted for you, little children, was to be home with Jesus Christ. Speak through.